from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I just uh, go with the flow. I go with the goddamn flow. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. Remember, I uh, told you a couple of weeks ago about uh, online dating and that over 30% of the women who place profiles on online sites put out of the first date. And I say that's a pretty good percentage. Probably a higher percentage. Would you think that 30% of the women you meet at a bar put out? <laughs> Probably not. But um, I see certain captions on some of these that you just wouldn't want to respond. Sounds like it's going to be a little too much work. Here's one. Let's be friends. Now, why would you even respond to a profile that says, let's be friends? And remember the one I told you about that says, love to travel? Look out for that one. Love to travel. Which really means love it when you're paying. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Here's a woman who must be fat. Quality or quantity? No matter what the photo says, I can pretty much guarantee you, you're going to be getting both. Here's a woman who says funny and cuddly. That definitely means fat. Any woman who's cuddly? Cuddly is something women say about big guys. So if a woman says she is cuddly, she's telling you she's fat. Here's one that is used, uh, just must love dogs. If all I want to do is have sex with you, why do I have to love dogs? Are you a dog? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Here's one. Friends first. One of my favorites. Friends first. That's the headline on a profile. Friends first means I've had sex with everyone else in town until you. <laughs> I had one-nighters. I jumped into bed with anything and everything. But that policy changes beginning with you. Forget it. Absolutely not. Jesus. Then you can tell the age. A lot of these women lie about their age. You can tell their age by the headline. Like, if a woman's headline says, if you like pina coladas, dot, 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 that's an old person. Anybody who remembers that song about placing personal ads from the 70s is too old for you. <laughs> and why do they put it in there? Stupid. Just some things to think about in case you are considering Using online dating to get laid. Don't waste your time with some of those. All right, wide open telephones here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Sarah, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I need male perspective on my situation. I'll see if I can get a guy. Hang on. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm a guy. Okay. 
Um, I have a boyfriend for over a year, and he lives in London, and obviously I'm based in L.A., and we Well, wait a minute. First of all, it's not obvious to me that you're based in L.A. Okay, I'm sorry. I picked up the phone, and your name is Sarah. You can be based anywhere. Okay, I didn't realize that, but... I can't see you. Okay. I, I don't have Google Earth trained on your house. Okay, it's can I go back to my... Nothing house? is obvious. Huh? Okay, so basically he lives in, in London. London. And We've been doing long distance for a year. What does that mean, you've been doing long distance? In other words, he comes over here for a bit, I go back over there. How often? Um, well, every couple of weeks. Dear, what do you do for a living? Um, I work in fashion. You're a model? No. What do you do? I, I don't want to get into... This. I don't want to know where you work. I just want to know what you do. I work for a designer. So you are a designer or you no, work... I work with a designer. Well, that, So you don't make enough money to be able to afford all these flights, do you? Well, not really. So how are you paying for them? Let me guess. You're putting them on a credit card that Prince Charming one day will have to pay the balance, right? Well, I do put them on a credit card, but I don't expect Prince Charming to pay the balance. How are you going to pay the balance? Okay, can I just... Darling, this is important. I'll pay it eventually. <laughs> no, you... Well, you'll pay it at the end of a barrel of a gun, or you'll file for bankruptcy. First of all, okay, I, what I'm trying to, here's what I'm trying bank. to tell you, dear. You can't afford this. Okay, but my problem isn't my bank statement. Well, it isn't yet because they haven't made you pay yet, but go ahead. Okay. Um, so basically, he came over here last month, and I tried to help him out with his career. I tried to make sure, like... Because he he wants to be in a band, so I try to you know. He wants to be in a band. Well, he he is a band, but he wants to do that for his career. So and, I, and 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 you don't work in the music industry. How are you helping him? Well, I have you know a lot of friends who work on labels, and I tried to introduce him to a few people, and he wasn't really interested. And he uh, wasn't interested in what? In in kind of promoting himself or promoting his music. Because he's kind of, I don't know, he's a little bit of an introvert. But right, and he wants to be a performer. That's great. <laughs> uh, you want a prediction for his likelihood of success? Well, okay, basically he, the problem is, like, he is definitely the best guy I've ever met. And I just, I don't know, like, I'm trying to understand if... What does he do for a living? He just graduated from university. So he's unemployed. Correct? Well, he, he'll be employed, you know, he, relatively soon. But no, no, he won't be. Because what, what, where will he be working? What will he be doing? Well, he'll probably be based in London again. No, no, dear. What will he be doing for money? I don't know. Probably some sort of temping job until he gets... Temping? Where? In London? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we, we have a guy who really doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up. No, he does know. He wants to work in music. Doing what? Well, either a sound engineer or in a band. Does he have any training in that area? He's going to start, of course. So he has no training, therefore no qualifications, therefore no likelihood no, of getting starting, a job. He's going to be starting a course in the spring. So what was he going to school for, if I may ask? Well, he did his degree um, in physics. And, physics? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sure that's very, uh, very lucrative for him. Anyway, the point and of is, course, let's, darling, don't don't move ahead so fast. I'm taking my time with you. Stop trying to. You know what you want to do? Every time I mention something uncomfortable, you want to press the fast forward button, like like TiVo. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. You want to go right past gonna... that and get to something else. Any time I mention a sore point, you want to move on. No, I just want to get to like the. We'll root. get to it. You know what? It's my show. I'll I'll. You know what? If I want to take more time with you. And get to the root of all these problems, then don't worry about it. It's 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 my problem, okay? Okay. Don't be. I, I will decide how long this call has to go. <laughs> Are you catching a train right now or something? No, I'm not. All right, then you're going to let me go through all these elements here. Okay. So we have someone who studied physics and has no interest in it. Well, he thought he did before he started. Yeah, but he didn't bother to change majors or anything. He went right through and got a degree and has no plan on using it. So now he's unemployable because he has no training at anything. Well, he's going to start a sound engineer course. But that, that's not a job. That is more schooling and more delaying of having a job. 
Mm. Right? Now, uh, how does he pay for plane tickets? Um... His parents are very wealthy. His parents are very wealthy. So this is part of the reason he's completely unmotivated. Okay. You understand that? Yes. And he may never find any direction in his life based on what you see so far. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You do? Yes, I do. So you wouldn't mind being with a guy who sits around the house all day and changes well, careers every year, every six months, or doesn't work half the time, you'd be okay with that. Well, because I know the type of guys in this city, and I know he's definitely the best guy I will ever find. That's not, Darling, we'll get to that. Uh, by the way, best what? Best in bed? Best looking? Best everything. Most fun to spend free time with? He is not a guy who is going to have any ambition to do anything. Well, you never know. I mean, Yes, I do. No, but the type of industry he wants to get into, it's one of those things... He wanted to get into physics, and he got bored with that. I know, but he could have a lucky break, or... No, no, well, you're darling, now, see, now you're already you're wishing for lucky breaks. He's not going to accomplish anything. He has no direction. He has no motivation. Well, he's a really smart guy, though. He has, you know, an honest... I Some of the smartest people I know... You know, I have a cousin who I love dearly. One of the smartest people I know. I'll tell you how smart he is. One summer, he read the entire encyclopedia from A to Z, like a book. He read, like, he was on chapter 1 through 26. He read A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. He read every one, every volume. Okay? Okay. But until he was... In his 30s or 40s, he did, he was not gainfully employed. There are many people like that. Yeah. They're, 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 they're directionless in life. They have no motivation. They're smart, but they have no focus. Yeah. And that's what you have here. Well, I don't necessarily agree with you. Well, I'm sure you don't, because you like when he uh, delivers the old Stromboli to you, and so you can't be objective about him. But I can. I know, but the thing is, he is actually, like, going to try and do more courses to kind of pursue his interests, like, in the music side. <laughs> Dear, what's he waiting for? Why has he done it already? I think because he, he really, like, he kind of doubts himself a lot. Right. Because he has no ambition or interest in this. Like, he had no ambition or interest regarding physics. His parents are wealthy, and he has no ambition. Well, I think that's kind of like a very cliche perspective. Well, darling, let's say I'm right. Can you live with it? I guess. What do you mean you guess? Well, I, I just, I don't think you are right on this issue. Well, I know because, by the way, I, I like how you're starting to try to adopt the British accent there. The <laughs> kind of full British accent is starting to kick in there, which, you know, which you got by injection. Um, but it's not impressing anybody here in L.A., by the way. You can you can lay off it. Uh, now, now, darling, uh, all right, so let's move on now. Uh, this guy, his parents buy him plane tickets. Uh, why don't his parents buy you plane tickets? Well, they're not my parents. I understand, but they're rich. Well, I wouldn't ask them to. That's really tacky. You don't have any money, dear. You don't know that. I know that because you've got credit card bills you can't pay. Who says I can't pay them? Darling, do you have a balance on your credit card? Yes. Well, as long as you pay the minimum every month. That's my point, dear. And again, you are showing your immaturity and lack of a background in this area. Yes, you can pay the minimum every month, but the balance will continue to grow until you go bankrupt. That's how it works. Well, they're not that high yet. What do you mean they're not that high yet? When is he moving permanently to Los Angeles? Not anytime soon. See, that, that's the problem. That's and that means you're going to keep flying over there and you're going to keep building up your credit card balance, aren't you? Well, I was actually thinking of maybe moving there. Oh, great idea. Because, you know, I have a lot of friends there. and Because you also have no motivation. You have no focus in your life. No, that's not true. But and, thinking... and are you aware of how difficult it is for someone to come from another country and work in England or anywhere in the United Kingdom or anywhere in Europe for that matter? 
Well, I had, a, you know, a big interview there a month ago, and my second interview is in January, so I'm thinking about even if I don't get it, then going to there and doing something else there, basically. You can't work there. You don't understand. I was just there. I was Hi. just I was just there because they, they, first of all, they, there's the, something called the European Union. It's a union of ten countries in Europe, and you can move freely between these countries back and forth. Spain and France and Italy and England. You can move back and forth between those countries, but they are protecting their own economies. Well, I have an Italian passport. Are you Italian? Well, my dad is, so I have a passport. Hmm. All right. So that's a plus. I see. So what is your question? My question is, do you think based on my, like, well, obviously you don't know my experiences, but I've had, like, a lot of really bad experiences in L.A. with guys, and I know the type of guys in the city, and I just, I'm not really interested in that. Like, I'm not, I mean, to be honest, your show is kind of partly to blame, I think. So, You I mean because we told you the truth about guys? No, because you just treat all women like they're all the same, basically. Mo most of them are. Well, most guys tend to be the same because it's like a vicious cycle. Well, whatever. Point is, dear, uh, that where you live doesn't really have much to do with that. No, I know that. But at the same time, like, you know, I met someone in London who is really amazing. And I just really... Yeah, he, he, darling, he, he, you know, when you keep saying he's really amazing... To me, really amazing is somebody who is focused, driven, uh, knows what they want, goes out and they go out and get it. And they're not just somebody who bones you every three weeks uh, and then uh, uh, send you a bunch of emotional emails. I mean, I understand, like, where you're coming from. I understand if you're getting boned really well. That's fine. Don't let it affect your brain, dear. Okay, but my my main question is, I, I mean, do you think it's a good idea for me to risk my life in L.A. and move there? No, I don't. Even though I found someone who is really amazing. Why won't he move? Well, he first of all, he doesn't have a passport. Mm. And second of all, he's not very, like, he's not someone who would take risks. Oh, he's not someone who would take risks. You don't think he's taking a risk now? He studied physics and then has no interest in having a career that would involve physics. Now he's going to go to a school for sound engineering, and somehow he thinks he's going to become an engineer or a record producer. You don't think that's risky? Um, well, it is, but it's not the same level of risk. No, he doesn't want to take a risk for you is what he doesn't want to do. No, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily true. Ah, uh huh. I think that's like a very cliche idea. Oh, think... you keep saying that, darling, but I'm not hearing anything to get me over this. What you call a cliche, I'm not hearing it. He doesn't want to. Doesn't want to leave. Doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up. Is very unfocused. Very much without direction. And on top of that, you're going to go there with no job. Uh, the odds against you getting a job. By the way, are you aware how expensive Europe is? Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, mm-hmm. You have no money. All you have is what you make in your paycheck this week. Anybody who talks about making the minimum payment on their credit card is, at least from a financial standpoint, a loser. Well, I'm actually saving. <laughs> what do you mean you're saving? I, I like to pay minimum because I like to, you know, save the rest. Really? Where do you save it? What do you mean? What, do you have a bank account? Where yeah, do you save your, in a pillowcase? Where do you save the money? Yeah, I put them in a stocking under the tree. Seriously, I want to know. Do you I, put... I have a bank account. All right, what's the interest rate you're being paid on that account? I don't know. You don't know. Wonderful. Um, is it a savings or a checking account? Checking. Does it pay any interest at all? I don't think so. Right, so you're getting 0% interest. Now, What? I'll bet you don't know the answer to the next question either. What's the interest rate on your credit card? I don't think it's very high. How high is it? I'm not sure. You don't know. Do you really think you're mature enough to be making these major life decisions? You mean moving to London or... You don't even know card? how much... You, you don't even know what interest rate you pay in your credit card. 
You have money in the bank. You don't even know if it earns interest. Well, you don't think I... I don't use the credit card every single day. I That's not out. the point. You don't have to. Uh, a a, a 1500 or $2,000 plane ticket every couple of months added to your credit card? Well, sometimes my parents pay for it. Uh, they, well, they, they are stupider than you are, okay? But we'll get to that. Let's talk about this for a second. How much, I'll bet you don't know this answer either, well, how much is the balance on your credit card? Not the minimum payment, the balance. It's not that high. How much? I don't know, a couple thousand. You don't even know. Oh, I do know, but I'm not going to say it on a radio show. For Nobody a knows who you are. You're anonymous. It's not that much. It's a, probably over $5,000, no, isn't it? That is... Definitely not. Mm. And look, by the way, dear, the average interest rate on a card like yours for somebody your age, 21, is about 18%. Okay. All right. Do you think that's not that high, 18%? I don't know. That's what it is, 18% generally. Okay. Now, let's review. Let's say you have $5,000 on there. 18% of $5,000. How much is it? I think around three. Three, th all right, let's call it three. Okay, let's call it three. So you've got $3,000 on your credit card at 18% interest. You know what, eight, you know what, um, 18% of, of $3,000 is? That's five, by the way, this is simple interest. They actually don't calculate it this way, but it's $540 a year. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. How much on your money are you earning on the money? Uh, how much your money are you earning on the money you put in your checking account? The answer is zero. So the money you are saving, you could be using to reduce your debt where you're paying 18% a year. Yeah. But you are not experienced enough or smart enough to know to do that. You yeah, think I mean, somehow you're point. better off just... making the my minimum payment and continuing to pay $540 a year. No, that's, Divide that's that by point. 12, dear. Divide that by 12. You know how much that is? What? It's about... $43 a month. A month. Okay, I'll give you that. That's a good point. Well, that's very white of you. <laughs> so you're paying $43 a month for what? For nothing. Then you're saving money in your checking account. How much you got in there? That's <laughs> none of your business. Again, you're anonymous. How much? I didn't realize this was like a financial show. I thought uh, it was the, this is all part of it because we are measuring your maturity level here. How much is in your checking I account? I have a lot. What? I have a lot. Do you have more than $3,000? Yes. You have more than 5000 How would I be able to live in L.A. if I just had $3,000? Well, darling, I'm talking about the money you have saved beyond what you need for today's living expenses. Yes, I have more than 3000 in my checking. So the point is, what is exactly is the reason why you're paying $540 a year for your checking account? Why? Well, I just think it's... For your credit somewhat, card. I hear that it's good to build up credit when you just pay the minimum. Uh, well, that's wrong. Well, that's what everyone's told I don't care what everyone's told you. How many of them have any money? How many of them are multimillionaires? Did your parents tell you that? Do your parents pay the minimum payment? I don't know what they do. Why don't you ask them? Well, I remember a lot of people telling you when I first had my... None of them friends. were rich. Well, then how does someone... Build I up am. So then how does someone build up credit history? When you make a... When you borrow money in your credit card, pay it off. In full? Yes. So you only make credit history when you pay everything in full? No. I, you know, the point is, you, it doesn't hurt your credit history to pay your bill in full. That is misinformation. It's just stupid. And it's information given to you by somebody who knows as little about money as you do. Well, I must be doing something right, considering my credit limit always goes up. That is not a good thing. And by the way, the fact is, you're paying $540 a year for that privilege. And that amount's only going to go up the more plane tickets you put on there. The fact is, you can eliminate $540 a year in expenses today by taking $3,000 out of your checking account and paying your credit card. Okay, well, I appreciate the advice. But you won't do it. Yes, I will. Sure you will. All right, and uh, so, again, you really um, you haven't had a lot of experience away from home, dear. 
and going to another country is complicated. It's complicated. Things cost more. There are different laws, different rules. And you don't even really have a career. You have a job. Well, you know, I'm 21. I just graduated. What, and what was your major? English and communications. Right. And that's doing you a lot of good. So you 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 have something well, common. Really you have college. something in common with your boyfriend. You have a useless uh, college degree that has nothing to do with what you want to do for a living. That's not necessarily true. Really? I went to a really good college. What do you want to be when you grow up, dear? Um. Well, I would like to work at Vogue. Doing what? Um, kind of fashion writing. Kind of fashion writing. Okay, I didn't realize this was like a career slash financial line. Can I just get to the... Dear, this is all part of it. I mean, you've just, you're asking me, is this a good idea? If you are a mature individual, mature in terms of knowing how to take care of your finances, mature in that you know what you want to do for a living, mature in that you have uh, uh, goals and dreams and the, your specific method of getting to where you're going, I would give you a different answer than what I'm giving you now. You're too young, too immature... Not focused. Okay, I de definitely disagree about the not focused part. Well, you can say that all you like to. You're focused on getting boned. That's what you're focused on. <laughs> that is so You're ridiculous. focused on a guy that with an accent ridiculous. boning you. That's what you are. That's so absolutely, like, the most ridiculous thing I've heard. Well, I don't know any 21-year-olds that have exactly, unless they're actresses, that have their career sorted out. I don't know anyone. Well, then, then you know what? They shouldn't be leaving the country until they do. It's not as if, you know, it's not... Why are you arguing with me? You don't want my advice. You want to argue with me. No, because you're not, like, really listening to the problem. No, no, you want me to You want me to give you the answer you want. And when I don't, you're going to argue with me. You don't want my advice. You don't need my advice. You don't want go do whatever. Go over there, get boned. Two of you sit there on the public dole. Go right ahead. Enjoy it. Tom. Like is Tom. Like is 100. 100. Tom. 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 I think you're a misogynist. A what? A misogynist. A misogynist. What is that? That's a person who doesn't like women. A misogynist. Am I a? Well, I don't want to spell it. Let me tell you what I called you. Can you spell it? Yes, I can. Really? Go ahead. Uh, M M Y S G O N I S T I C. Misogynist. Yeah. The Tom Likey Show. Tom Likas Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Renee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How's it going? Doing great. Awesome. I, want, I, want, uh, I was listening to your show um, the last hour and I want to talk boxing. Okay. Yeah, um, I think, you know, the past few years, boxing, yeah. Boxing was a little down, but I think it made a big statement and it made a big comeback this past year. And there's a few stars that I think you might be overlooking. Who? Uh, well, there's there's uh, Kelly Pavlik, who had three fights this past year, and he won all three by knockout. He knocked out Jermaine Taylor, who was a middleweight champ, and he's going to have this huge following. They're going to have a rematch in January. And then after that, there's talks about having him uh, fight Fight his fight after that in, Cle in Cleveland Brown Stadium. They're expecting a big, a big turnout there. There's Miguel Cotto, who beat Zab Judah and Shane Mosley. And there's talks about Cotto fighting Oscar De La Hoya in May, and then possibly Mayweather by this time next year. And he's, you know, he's from Puerto Rico, but, you know, he's speaking English in the interviews, and he's going to be a huge crossover star. Then there's Juan Diaz from, from Houston, Texas. He's a lightweight champ. He, beat form, uh, he fought twice this year and made, made his two opponents quit in their corner. Look, uh, there's there's no doubt there are good fighters. I mean, I, you know, you're describing three very talented individuals. But being a star is more than being a good fighter. It's having an electric personality. Oscar De La Hoya is, is, is a star because he's more than a great fighter. People love him. They feel attached to him. They feel they know him. They want to know him. That's a star. 
a guy who's a good fighter, that's nice. And that's good. And we, you know, if you like boxing, you've got to have good fighters. But it, it doesn't make them stars. Yeah, but see, I mean, I mean, these guys have a lot of qualities that can make them stars. They just need. But the, you know, you, none of the qualities you described uh, were oh, well, I beyond did, I fighting. Did, I, I were, didn't were, describe their their qualities. I described I described their some of their accomplishments. The fact that, that they are good definitely. fighters means they are good fighters, and they'll probably continue to do well fighting. That yeah. doesn't mean they'll be stars. You well, could look at Oscar De La Hoya and see a good looking likable guy, humble in the beginning. From the beginning, you could see that guy was not just a good fighter. He was a star. He was going to be a big star, and he is a big star. Uh, but these other guys, all we know about them is that they're good fighters. No, I mean, they're, they're Swan Diaz. He just, um, he's, he's in college. He's going to he's gonna be a lawyer. He's, um, he has all these great qualities. All good that, things. That, yeah, but not and, not know. not the makings of star quality. I just think you know. I, I just think that there's there's going to be a star that's going to emerge from boxing and going to represent the, the sport pretty well. I mean, there there was there's Floyd Mayweather who just his, his pay per view with Ricky Hatton sold over eight hundred fifty thousand pay per views, and that's like the that's the highest number since you know for someone that not named Oscar De La Hoya or someone that isn't a heavyweight. But that's yeah. my point. Uh, if 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 he's a star, he should be in that uh, ring. He should be uh, the number should be in that ballpark. Yeah, and he is. You know, he is a star. And then when he's gone, you know, being being at this past year, and um, it looks like it's going to continue to happen. The best fighters are going to be fighting the best, and the star or two or three are going to emerge, or is going to emerge. You know, that's all I'm. Saying. Well, you know, I you know again true. that you're basing that on what's happened in the past. And as they say in all those ads for mutual funds on TV, past performance is no guarantee of future results. I've I've watched boxing my whole life. My dad was the biggest boxing fan I've ever known. He took me to fights big and small. And um, I just don't see the star quality in fighters now that I saw before. Even when people are technically good at what they do, they aren't necessarily... Star quality. I mean, the smile of Oscar De La Hoya is what sells him as a star, more than his fighting. Because long after he steps out of the ring, people will idolize him. And he won't be fighting at all at some point. And the qualities that make a star go beyond what they do for a living. My agent, who I rarely talk about on the air, but he's, he's a brilliant man. And he knows this business inside out of show business. He calls it getting out over the footlights. Somebody who's more than just a good actor is a star. Somebody who you love them, you care about them, you follow them. You don't just say, boy, I just saw a play and it was good. I just saw a movie and there was a good actor in it. There's plenty of good actors. How many good actors are stars? Right. Same thing with boxing. Being a good boxer doesn't make you a star. Having star quality makes you a star. You know what I'm saying? Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. Are the only women that you date what? God, I hope so. The Tom Likas Show. Like his show. Wide open telephones at 1 800 5800 Tom. Leanna on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. I have a question, and I was wondering if you could please help me. I would really appreciate it. Okay. Um, I live here in Southern California, and um, the last week of November, I went to Texas for a trip. And there I met a, I met a guy, and uh, we just talked a couple days. And then before I left, we exchanged numbers. And then we talked f more like about three weeks or less than that. And he was really nice, and he seemed like he, he was really interested in me, that he really liked me and this and that. He told me his life story and 
And then I went back to see him, and we spent one day together, and then um, I left. And then since then, he became cold. I mean, he texted me maybe twice, and then he stopped calling, and he doesn't answer my text messages, all my calls. I don't know why he disappeared. Sure he's not married? No, he said, okay, he has a daughter. All right. Are you sure he's not married? Well, he told me he's not, and he said that he... Were you at his house? I met... Uh, yeah, when I went there, he introduced me to his family. His and family? Then, well, his dad and his brothers. And So uh, he lives He lives at home? Yes. And he says that he has a daughter with his ex-girlfriend, and he has visitation rights or something like that. Right. And, um, and he also introduced me to his best friend. Okay. So he's probably not married if he... Uh... If he introduced you to all those people. Yes. Um, Darling, you live 1,500 miles away from him. I know. <laughs> but he seemed, I just, I don't understand why he disappeared. He was like, I like you, I will miss you, this and that. And now he's like. Well, because all that talk, 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 you know, he may have just come to the realization that you live in Los Angeles, he lives in Texas. And the reality is that what's going to happen here? Are you going to move to Texas? Uh, I no. don't know. Well, he doesn't want to move here because he likes the countryside there. Right. And and where are you from originally? Me? You. I'm from, uh, well, from Uzbekistan, which, you know, used to be part of the Soviet Union. Yes. Okay. So but I'm... I'm ha- um, and so, so what language do you speak, dear? I speak Russian. All right. How many people do you think speak Russian in Texas? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Unless they play hockey. My guess, not many. Yeah. So you're not going to find grocery products? You're not going to find people who speak your language? Well, you're, you're... I don't live in Los Angeles. I live in Orange County, so there are not very many Russian people anyway. I think there's more than there ever were. <laughs> you haven't been here oh. long. Oh, Okay. Uh, believe me, it used to be there weren't that many Russian people in Los Angeles, period. And now there's many, many. Yeah, that's true. Many, many. But the bottom line is, you know, again, uh, Los Angeles has people from all around the world. Mm-hmm. By the way, what are you doing in Orange County? I live. I mean, I live and I work. Oh, you, you live near work. I mean, I live and I work. <laughs> No, no, but you, you live in Orange County because you work in Orange County. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Right, so you wanted to live near work. Yes. All right. I mean, I. by the way, I love going to Texas, but I'm American and I'm a guy. <laughs> Where in Texas does he live? Uh, You know, there's an island. He lives close to an island. He lives in a city, Harlingen. Uh, what is it called? Harlingen is somewhere in the valley, oh. somewhere there. Okay. <laughs> um, it's like, it's close to this island where a lot of students go for the spring break. South Padre Island, is that what it's called? Yes, I think so. Okay. All right. So, um, how are you going to have a relationship with this guy? Um, I don't know. Well, because I thought I would be going there like maybe once a month or something. Once a month? How do you make a relationship out of that? <laughs> I'm just wondering. I mean, he seems so like he. I mean, he seemed like he really liked me, and I started liking him too. And now it's like. But don't aren't there any guys who like you in California? Um. No. No. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. Darling, there's there's a lot of men in California. About twenty million of us. <laughs> in Southern California, there's. About six million of us. It's difficult to meet them. Why? Well, because I don't go out that much. But you're going to go all the way to Texas to meet somebody? (laughs) Darling, think this over, please. The Tom Likas Show.